My name is Austin, and I have an addiction. Brilliant! Oh yeah! Looks like I've still got the moves down. Okay, listen though, like, I'm really good at it, and I really like rhythm games. They're kind of like my baby. And when you put Persona 4 on it, it's like, oh! You might be thinking to yourself, why the hell is Austin doing a video on a game like this? No one cares about the Vita. Yeah, it's too bad. So, I'm quickly approaching 50 hours of game time within two weeks of release for a fucking rhythm game. But you see, this isn't just gonna be about one aspect. Yeah, sure, Dancing All Night has a ton of great music, some super challenging gameplay, a great returning cast of characters old and new. The collection itself has a great series of spin-offs, but none of them take the cake quite like this one. So if you haven't played the original Persona 4, just go fucking do it. Look, get a PlayStation TV and a copy of Persona 4 Gold it's just gonna run you like 60 bucks. It's a small price to pay for the amount of game you're gonna get out of it. I won't go into spoiler territory obviously, but this is just gonna make more sense if you've played it. The story of Dancing All Night takes place right after the events of the Persona 4 Golden Epilogue. So that makes our timeline Persona 4 with Q in the middle of that, Arena, Arena Ultimax, and Dancing. And this one's not, you don't need this one. When you look at a list of all these games, you're gonna notice a bunch of obvious differences. The Arena series are fighting games, Dancing All Night's a rhythm game, Persona 4 is an RPG dating sim Pokemon hybrid, and Persona Q is trash. I mean, Etrian Odyssey. So when you take a look at Dancing All Night, you would expect it to be the odd one out, but it really isn't. Hell, everyone knows that the Persona franchise is a spin-off from Shin Megami Tensei, so now we're just in spin-off spin-off territory where everything is just completely different. Fuck you if you don't understand. I mean, we did go from fucking post-apocalyptic demons, dark and edgy themes to this. I like this though. So basically, Risei is planning to make a comeback to the stage after her hiatus as an idol and decides she wants to drag her friends into it. That includes you, you, Naoto, and the whole investigation crew from the first game. Then there's another group of idols called Kanamin Kitchen that's all weird with food fetishing. I don't quite understand it, but I don't need to. Long story short, shit hits the fan and it's up to you and the gang to solve the mystery with dancing. Like seriously though, when I saw the initial trailers for this game, my only thoughts were like, let's fucking do it, I don't even care. It's an excuse to go back to the universe of one of my favorite games. <laughs> or, or you know, just played with dress up dolls. <laughs> Do I have to wear this? So each song plays out in a similar fashion. You got a total of seven buttons to press. The circles on the left and right represent each side of the Vita or controller. Down, left, up, and X circle triangle. Then you also have the big ring that comes forward at you, which is supposed to be a scratch. I, I mean, you basically hit buttons in a rhythmic order that depends on whatever song you're playing, because it's a rhythm game. The concept is tried and true. If it ain't broke, why even try to fix it? Also, if you don't like rhythm games, just stay away. The easiest the easiest comparison I can make for the gameplay is a Project Diva style game, but with a Persona flair. All of your favorite characters are sitting there dancing in the little circle as you're pressing the buttons to make them dance. Although your performance doesn't affect their dancing, it will affect whether or not a partner comes out to join. And of course you want that! It's cute as fuck! How could you not want this? Speaking of the dancing, the amount of time spent on the choreography must have been pretty insane. Most levels have a choreography mode that you can unlock upon beating them. Here you can sit and watch your favorite characters dance in the training stage from Street Fighter 4 for an eternity. But seriously, I've never seen dancing this fluid in a video game before. And it's a fucking Vita game! You can't tell super well in the normal stages, but the dances are designed to be continuous throughout the entire song. And when you zoom in on that shit, you'll see expressions. Fucking expressions! I'm used to my plastic dolls dancing totally straight-faced and instead, Persona pulls this shit. And that helps to make each character's respective dances really reflect their personalities. Kanji has this reckless and tribal style of dancing while Chie is super bouncy and hyper. Naoto, admittedly the weakest of the dancers, takes the slower songs and goes for less intensive moves. And of course, Yu is just the most white bread motherfucker I've ever seen in my life. It's like three decades late. I know, like, none of this would matter if the soundtrack wasn't good and was filled with, like, Chumbawamba tribute bands, but- Oh, 
it's actually top fucking tier. Like seriously. I know some people were clamoring for more of the original Persona 4 soundtrack to be included here, but damn, some of these remixes not only fit right in, but eclipse the original recordings. Pick a style of music, it's most likely here. Bubblegum J-pop, a big band version of Like a Dream Come True, a dubstep version of Time to Make History, a full version of the Juness theme. There's something here for everyone. Kinda like me with Maze of Life and the fact that it's the best song on the list, fuck you. Look, we could splurge all day, but in the interest of being fair, we should talk about some of the shortcomings. Despite all the visual praise that the Persona franchise gets, I do think that the gameplay UI is a bit rough. It's very clear that they went for style here, and at times the note patterns can become super difficult to read, especially in tracks where the background of the dancer is like, hey look, colors! Notes will easily fly under the radar, especially on harder difficulties, and this might be a turnoff for newer players. I've gotten used to it from all of my time playing, but I do think that when in comparison to other games in the genre, Dancing All Night is one of the hardest to properly visualize. Also going back to the story, you're gonna be around for a while. It's pretty fucking lengthy. This only becomes a problem because the middle section of the story drags on for a tad bit long. Unlike Persona 4, where there are plenty of different lessons to be learned for each segment of the game, Dancing presents you with a very formulaic solution to everyone's problem. It's like, yeah, we get it, you're not comfortable with yourself, let's go to the next dance. I think it's partially due to the fact that it's super unusual for a story mode to be present in a rhythm game. Songs can be split up by as little as 5 minutes to as much as 45 to 50 minutes of dialogue, or you could just hold a button and skip all of it to get to the next piece of meat as fast as possible. But for those of you who are super into the cast of the investigation team, this is like a little slice of heaven. I think that the Persona 4 series has always had excellent spin-offs, but dancing might be a contender for one of the best spin-offs ever created. Let's do in part to the fact that it's Persona and how it deals with the story. Playing through Persona 4 is quite a methodical thing. You play one day at a time, going about your business and talking to the people that you want to talk to. You build these relationships on your own accord, and by the time it's all over, saying goodbye to these characters becomes something that's a little difficult to do. It's not a finally it's over moment, but instead a oh fuck, it's over. It has this saddening sense of finality that's hard to accept. So whenever any one of these Persona 4 spinoffs comes out, it's kinda like getting to meet up with an old group of friends for the first time in a while. Because you is a blank slate avatar in the original game, you really become this character. The kicker here is that these characters, while visually similar, have definitely changed a bit. Characters in the game will even make remarks about the growth others have had, even though it's only been a few months. Yeah, sure, it looks like Kanji, but he's a bit older and a bit smarter, and it fucks me up, man! Basically, I don't think I've ever seen another video game franchise replicate the concept of friendship as well as the Persona 4 franchise has. This is why I think that Dancing stands out as a spin-off that other game developers in the industry should take note of. Other spin-offs in the collection, such as Arena, also share the same themes as Dancing in the fact that it just feels like a Persona 4 title. Like it belongs, rather than being simply a cash-in. The concept of joy, reflected in the meaning of the color yellow, is spread across all of these games, now even being adopted on everyone's outfits. The investigation team went through hell and back, formed relationships, and maxed out social links. These are a group of friends who persevered through the worst of it, whose eternal bonds can outlast the mightiest of foes. Now with dancing. Listen, Persona 4 is clearly one of my favorite games. When I see a spin-off come out that does its predecessor this much justice, I can't help but fall in love with it. Sure, maybe you can treat this as simply a rhythm game with good music, and at its heart, dancing all night is totally that. You can play for the music, or even the costumes, because you got a ton of them. You can see your favorite characters dance in cat outfits, speedos, and whatever the fuck this is. There's even a boatload of content post-release, including songs, characters, outfits, and costumes to extend the replayability, and I bought all of it. Dancing needs it as well, because unfortunately the experience is a little short-lived. Once all is said and done, all that's left to do is work on your high scores, go for that platinum trophy, and try for the top of the leaderboards. But hey, what did you expect? Persona 4 Dancing All Night is one of those games that's gonna hit audiences for all kinds of different... <laughs> reasons? Maybe you want a solid rhythm game, maybe you want to make your anime waifus dress up in ridiculous outfits, or maybe you're like me and once again want to see what your old pals are up to. Or just anime titties. Take that.